this morning is John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Morning. So I have to be honest about this sermon. I know. This is the first, okay? I'm going to be honest, but it's kind of different. No, I have a favorite band. They're named Super Chick. It's a bunch of females. That's why they're called that. And I stole the concept, not the sermon, obviously, because it's a band from Super Chick, and I just loved it. Today we are on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, talking about a higher love. And it's pretty fitting for this time of year, because most of us are thinking already about this higher love that God so loved the world, <laughs> that he sent his son. 1 Corinthians 13. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Does not act becomingly. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Does not take into account a wrong suffered. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. And when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I has also been fully known. But now faith, hope, love abide these three. But the greatest of these is love. When we look at John 3.16, the thing we need to get so much is that it's love. It starts with love and it ends with love. And the whole idea is that God loved us. When we look at the manger scene or we look at Christmas and we think about Jesus coming, we need to start where it starts. With love. It's love that motivated God to send his son. It's love that motiv motivated Jesus to give up his life. It was not a sense of duty or obligation. It was a sense of love because nothing it can be required of God. God is God whether he sends Christ or not. But out of his love, he decided... To send his son and give us everything. To not only send his son so that he would put on flesh and suffer the same temptations we do. Suffer through the same pains we do. Suffer through the same losses that we do. That he would share in all that and that at the culmination of all that, he would then suffer at the hands of his people. Be spit upon and mocked. Then be crucified. And rise for us. Die for our sins and rise for us. And when we look at this, we know that it starts with this love because God did not need to send Jesus. He chose to send Jesus. So what about God? Let's read this same passage with God in our mix. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels but do not have God... 
I become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mystery and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have God, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and after I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have God, it profits me nothing. God is patient. God is kind and is not jealous. God does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly. God does not seek his own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. God never fails. It's just as true whether we insert God into this passage or we leave it love. We know that God never fails. We know that God is all these things because God says that he is love. And too often religion becomes all these things and whether we've skipped love or God, it's worthless. He says it in multiple ways, but what he is saying in all of it is no matter what you're doing, if you skip love, it's pointless. Nobody wants to have somebody play the drums and go duh, 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 and just hit randomly. Nobody wants to hear me sing. We have this concept. And what he says is, it's the same as just somebody pounding on a gong. It doesn't make a note where people can get ready. It doesn't produce a sound that's pleasurable. It's just a pounding on a gong. And too often we forget that our religion does not work outside of relationship. Too often we forget that if we are not connected with God, we can go through all the motions in the world and be the best person ever. And it matters not. But today we would like to focus one more time on this passage and put it really pretty much where Rick was talking about this morning. What about Jesus? Let's read about Jesus. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have Jesus, I become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have Jesus, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have Jesus, it profits me nothing. Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind and is not jealous. Jesus does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly. Jesus does not seek his own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never fails. We, we look at Christ and we, I've heard it called the imperfect miracle, because it is. And it's not discrediting that this is the greatest act of all time, is not only God putting on flesh, but giving up that flesh. But it's an imperfect miracle because it's unfinished. You think about it, Jesus rising from the dead is not the point of the miracle. Elijah made dry bones rise, not the point of the miracle. Lazarus. Rose from the dead. Not the point of the miracle. But when we look at Jesus, it is an unfinished miracle because it is only finished in us. It is the greatest miracle of all time because no matter what he did, if he raised the dead, they still died at some point later. If he gave sight to a blind man, at some point that ended too. He fed them. At some point they got hungry. And no matter which miracle we look at of Jesus, it was finished, but not as great as his unfinished miracle. His miracle that wasn't about rising from the dead or putting on flesh or any of it. It was about love. It was about God loving us and wanting us. Because if all he got was to rise from the dead, there was no point for Christ to be born. He was just going to rise from the dead anyway. But if the point in him putting on flesh and being raised from the dead was us, was 
us as individuals, is every one of us coming to the scripture and saying, without Jesus, I am nothing. No matter what good I think I do, it doesn't matter. No matter what skills I think I have, they don't count. No matter what practices I have down perfect, if I know everything, it doesn't matter. For without Jesus, none of it matters. But God, knowing that we needed Jesus and without Jesus, nothing counted. He sends his son with a purpose. Because God is timeless. He doesn't send his son and then wait to see the outcome. He sends his son ready for his son to die. The day Christ was born, God was ready for him to be crucified. The day that Christ was conceived, God already knew the full story. God didn't wait to see what happened. He already knew. And this story of a virgin giving birth doesn't even matter without it being finished. It, it, it's a neat thing. But in the Bible, we have many miracles. And Jesus did some beautiful miracles in his life. And it is so strange that the final miracle was placed on us. And I don't mean us as in 2,000 years ago. I mean us as in this very day right now. It's still not finished. His miracle was not finished. The law was finished. The law of sin and death in which we had no hope was finished. But without us, his miracle is just him rising from the dead. Sorry, it's not that exciting in the Bible. He had only been dead three days. Those bones at least had long enough to have no flesh left on him. When Elijah raises him, he builds up an army too. He doesn't just raise one person. And too often we look at this and we forget that all of that is about us. And that is, that is me. I am the reason that God puts on flesh. Imagine that. If you have a choice, you feel no pain, you are all-powerful, almighty, you never have to suffer anything, or you get to be a human. I I don't know, many of us are going to go, let's go human, that sounds good, right? Wake up, uh, pain, loss, suffering. None of us are going to choose that, and that is exactly what we're talking about. For God so loved the world that he sent his son, that he puts on flesh That he suffers as one of us so that he can suffer for us. And it doesn't say that he only took upon our sins. It says he took upon our pain and suffering. So that in our life, all that is taken upon him. And on the cross, he does not only bear our sins, but he bears our sickness. Because he has an answer. Medicine fixes the disease so we can get another one. Jesus doesn't fix our disease so we can get another one. He heals us of all disease. He offers us a life with him in which he says the same thing he did here. None of it mattered if you didn't know me. And you come to God and you say, God, I've done this, 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 and this. And he goes, I don't know you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. But, but I did this. God, did, didn't I tell you what I did? And it's the same as this passage. It doesn't matter. Because if Jesus comes to destroy the law, it means that we weren't making it. It means that we were not righteous in the first place. If we could have been saved through the law, he would have done it. But because even our righteous deeds are filthy rags. 
and that we can never balance that scale. We know that no matter how much good we do, we'll never outweigh a single bad thing we do. Because if we do good, we have done nothing more than what is expected of us as God's creation. So if we do everything right and one thing wrong, we know that that one thing without Jesus is too much. And if we do everything wrong and one thing right, we know that Jesus is enough. And if there is anyone here who is trusting on their laurels or trusting that their righteousness or trusting on themselves, we need to be reminded that if you speak with the tongues of men and of angels but do not have Jesus, I become a noisy gong or a clang cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so that's to remove mountains, but do not have Jesus, I am nothing. Galatians 3, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have, put on, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. In Christ is our only hope. If it was not so, he would not have sent his son. If there is anybody today who has not trusted in Jesus because you trusted in anything else, it will fail. But Jesus never failed. If there is anyone who, having heard the word, believe that Jesus is Lord, confesses him as Lord, repents of your sins, and is baptized into him, then this verse becomes true to you. You become a child of God to live for him. And that nothing matters. It doesn't matter Jew, Greek. It doesn't matter slave, free, male, female, any of it. It doesn't matter. Because all that matters is Jesus. If there's anybody who has not received that, there's an invitation today. If there's anybody who needs prayers, or anybody wants to submit to the eldership here, we ask that you come now as we stand and as we sing.